Hello and welcome everyone. Hope you are doing great. In this session, we're going to talk about several very useful pirate related items. Now, let's begin our work or, well, basically our discussion with this item up here, temp coloring. This would be a customizing item, guys, using which we would be able to apply or specify different colors for our tabs uh, to make them more distinguishable, you can say, within our works and projects. And this would help us have a better grip, control, or basically just understanding of our views and projects. Now, by default, uh, normally, guys, the, the tabs within our workspace would be displayed like this. I mean, they would have this border shape to them. And as for another thing, guys, we can always open up settings. Then in here, we can find a UI UX. This is where we would be able to control both our project tabs and also family tabs. And of course, I'm talking about their styles. For example, I'm going to select background fill for both of these. Then down here, I can filter the colors, I can select them, I can control the order, like I don't want this one, I'm going to remove it, and instead go with this order. And well, after I'm done, I can click on save and reload to apply all of these new settings and modifications. So you guys, now the tabs are being displayed through the specified colors, and as I said, this could help us have a better understanding of what exactly is going on within our projects. Okay, that will be all regarding this very useful item. Next up, we got Minify Revit UI. Yet another customizing or optimizing item, guys. Uh, we can hold shift here, then click on it to open up a tab here, talking about this tab. As you can see, we have a list containing all the tabs that we have in our project. And we can basically just select the ones that we don't need in order to hide them from our viewport. Well, to be more precise, guys, first we need to select them from this list, and then next time we can just hide or unhide them via clicking on this item. Now, guys, we can kind of do the same thing using Add-ins Manager that we have here, but the thing is, if we do this, if we use Add-ins Manager, after we're done, we need to close down the software and then reopen it again to make sure that all the modifications are being applied. Using our PyRevit item, though, well, this whole thing happens instantly, I mean, right on the spot. Next up, we got an importer item. Very useful. Well, obviously, guys, importing a CAT file, for example, is something that we do a lot during our projects. And as I'm sure you already know, after we imported the files, we would be able to open up the VG tab to, well, to turn the files either on or off, okay? Now, although this is a very simple process, guys, we actually have a better way. I mean, to be honest, some of the clicks that we're doing here are kind of extra. So, using this PyRevit item, talking about importer, we would be able to, well, either hide or unhide the imported files quite easily via a single click. That's it. All right, moving on. Let's see what else we can talk about. Uh, we could talk about sync views. Yeah. Mm, okay, so to talk about this item, I actually need to open up a couple of views first. Then I'm going to use WT and set these two next to each other. Now, these two views are related, but they are not synced. I mean, uh, for example, if I apply a modification in this plan, I might not be able to see it or find it within the sailing plan. So this could obviously be a problem. And as for a solution, we can use sync views. So, I'm going to click on it, and this way the views would be synced, which means that if I, for example, zoom in on a point in this plan, the same thing happens in the other view, guys, see? Now, well, this actually works both ways. To put this simply, guys, this is an item that you can work with in order to manage or basically just control your views a lot better than before. Let's move on to the next item. Let me just maximize my view. The next item that we're going to talk about is called Show View Range. Here. A very useful item. To be honest, guys, dealing with the concept of view range could be quite challenging for most of the users. Well, especially the beginners. Well, I mean, like, they might have problems with understanding the concepts related to view range to be more precise. Like, for example, what they are, how they work, what they do, and so on. Now, to put this simply, PyRevit has kind of, well, simplified this whole comprehension or understanding process for us. 
Now, in order to provide a better elaboration, I'm going to use WT and set these two views next to each other one more time. All right, guys, let's see what exactly we can do using show view range. First up, the section box should be activated within our uh, 3D view. Um, you know what? Again, for the sake of having a better elaboration here, I'm going to reduce my boundary. Make this more distinguishable and visible. Or, you know what, I guess I can even go more inwards. Yeah, I guess this will do better. All right, guys, basically when we click on view range, we would see items such as the top plane. Uh, then we would see the cut plane, uh, the, the where we would see the section. Then we would also have bottom, also view depth, which currently is set on minus 500. And well, view depth is kind of an extra plane that we would see, and we are also able to control its lifestyle from here. For example, I'm going to try to go with another color for it, and then maybe also another style. I'm going to go with these dashed lines to make this more visible. See, now these items are more visible in our views. I mean, they are set in our view depth. Okay. Anyway, guys, back to 3D here. Now, what I'm going to do would be clicking on Show View Range from PyRevit. Immediately, this tab would appear. Now, as you can see, it says that we need to select something from our project browser, a level, plan, section, whatever. Now, as you can see, guys, all the items that we mentioned before, top plane, cut plane, bottom plane, and view depth are completely specified here. And well, this specification is happening through different colors, and also their exact elevation code is being displayed as well. Now, the same thing happens for any other item that we would actually select from our project browser. All the view range related items are being, uh, well, are completely being specified, as I said. And now, if needs be, we can, for example, change this, like, give me, well, 1,200. See, guys, this plane here got moved. To be honest, guys, in my opinion, this is one of the most useful items that we have that could be quite handy, that could be quite, uh, well, helpful for the user, especially, as I said, for the beginners. All right, guys, when it comes to working with Revit, one concept that we should definitely be familiar with, well, completely familiar with, is the concept of selection, different types of selections. So let's talk about pick. Basically, using pick in PyRevit, we would be able to select our items, elements, and categories quite more easily. As you can see, when we click on it, we'll get this tab containing all the categories that we have. Like, for example, I'm going to select the columns. Now I'm going to do a click drag here. And... Only and only the columns would be selected for me. Now, we kind of could have done the same thing using filters as well, guys. See? From this tab, just going to select structural columns. Now, don't really think I need to mention this, honestly, but, well, using Pick and PyRevit, this whole selection thing happens a lot faster and, well, even easier, you can say. And by the way, we can use tab to switch in between the categories in order to select the one that we want. Yeah, see, only columns are selected. Now, let's try this one more time. This time, only windows. Okay. Very useful item. All right, next up, we got pick detail elements. As you can guess from the name, guys, using this one, we can select the detail items. I mean, 2D elements, such as tags, dimensions, tags, and, well, the rest. And, obviously, guys, where we talk about detail elements, we need to talk about model elements as well. So, if I click on Pick Model Elements and then do a click-drag like this, no detail element, no 2D element would be selected for me. Yeah, so this would only select the elements that are being categorized as models. Next up, we can talk about Isolate. When we click on it, we'll get this tab from which we would be able to select the category or the element that I want to isolate. Like, for example, again, Structural Columns. See? Only structural columns are being displayed. Now, this time, structural framing. Or for example, give me doors. Surely you know all about the importance of isolating the elements in Revit, guys. 
And well, now you can do it even more easily than before. Next up, we have a couple of related items, copy and paste state. They are quite useful. Okay, let's see what I can do with them. I'm going to enter one of these views, for example, this one. Now, let's try applying some modifications here, some settings. For example, give me crop region. Then, I'm going to adjust it a bit, like reduce it. I'm going to reduce the boundaries from all four sides. Yeah, I guess this will do. Now, I'm going to use importer here to hide the imported files. Then, I'm going to try hiding the reference planes as well. All right, what else? Maybe setting this on fine and for the scale, 1 50th. All right, let's hide the section line. All right, guys, now, obviously, we got these views here. I'm talking about north, uh, north, south, west, and east views, okay? Now, what I'm going to do would be using WT to set all of these four views next to each other and also using ZF to zoom fit on them as well. Now, as you just saw, we applied some settings and modifications in one of the views, and now let's say we want the same in other views as well. And, oh, by the way, you know that crop region-related uh, settings would usually be applied manually. Now, though, I'm going to try doing this more easily, guys. Select the view, then click on Copy State. Here, we can select Crop Region. Now, we can enter another view and click on Paste. Oh, it didn't work here because this is not an aligned view. So, you know what, let me try this again. I'm going to apply another modification here. Get another copy. Select Crop. The aligned view would be North. So, Paste. All done. Now, as for another thing that we did earlier, guys, uh, we actually hide some of the categories and elements, right? Now, obviously, it's going to take some time to apply all of those settings in another view. And sure, we can create and use a view template, but what if we didn't have time to create a view template in the first place? So, in order to do this whole thing faster, I mean, even faster than creating and using a view template, again, we can use copy state. Now, select visibility and graphics, then paste in the target view and well guys we can just go on like this we can continue like this to apply some graphical modifications that we want to have in all the views see we applied all of those settings all of those modifications in all the views why a single click, you can say. No, not single click, but well, it was quite simple and a lot faster than before. So yeah, what I'm trying to say here is that we can add a lot of pace to our work using these two related items. Next up, we can talk about a model check-in item, which is quite useful for beam managers. We're going to talk about pre-flight check. You can find this item right here in the project panel. Let's click on it. Oh, actually, when we click on it for the first time, we'll get a different kind of tab containing an Excel file. So let me do this again using Shift here. Yeah, so we can basically select this Excel file and try saving it in a folder. And from this moment forward, we'll get this tab whenever we click on Pre-Flight Check. Now, as I said, this is a model checking feature, and here we have a list containing everything that is being checked out. Let's uh, let's run the process. We should be getting another tab. Yeah, here. Let's click on yes. And the result would be a very beautiful, and you can even say a very complete analytic report. See, there is no revel links, 52 views, none of which is set inside any sheets. Then there are also 13 view templates. None of them are being used. No schedules, no sheets. Oh, 54 warnings. This is interesting. And four of them are critical. So yeah, we ought to get to them. Uh, what else? 238 materials. And well, basically, guys, this is a very full uh, report on what exactly is going on with this part of our model. Now, this time, I mean, let's try this one more time. And this time, let's try checking the entire model. And again, as for the result, guys, we'll get another very complete and, well, quite organized report on everything that's going on. 
here in this model. Now let's see what other items we got here, guys. I mean, what other items we can use as the base for our analysis. We got, for example, grids. We got naming. You know what? Let's actually try naming. Let's see what we're going to get if we go with naming. Oh, we actually need to create a naming list for this analysis. So let's try something else for now. Grids. And run. Wait for it. This one actually worked. We got all the grids, all the axes, and oh, these are actually unpinned. And this could be problematic, quite problematic later on. So don't forget to pin the axes and grids as well. I mean, to put this simply, we should make sure that the grids and axes are completely fixed up. All right, guys. Anyway, so basically, these would be some useful, some important, and well, quite simple items that we got in PyRevit. And obviously, using them, we can work more professionally. Now, hope you all enjoyed everything, everyone. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.